I'm Rich Carroll. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota, here to wow you. Flagler schools are preparing for the next school year by giving families options. Karen Johnson has the details. As the 2021-2022 school year planning sessions are underway for Flagler schools, options are being finalized, according to Jason Wheeler, the Community Information Specialist for Flagler Schools. Moving forward to next year, we will return to our traditional two-option plan. Option one is an in-person, face-to-face, at the student's home zone school or their school of choice. Option two is for those students who would rather learn virtually, they can do so through our iFlagler program. Wheeler adds the remote line Live option will be discontinued at the end of the 2020-2021 school year. For those interested in iFlagler, you can find additional information at iFlagler.org. Registration is open through July 10th of 2021. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Karen Johnson. Two fishermen are rescued after spending most of the day on their disabled boat. The men called the Flagler County Sheriff's Office on April 23rd to report that the motor had died on their John boat and that they didn't know their exact location. They were on Palm Coast's Long Creek Paddling Trail and ended up in some marshland off the Intracoastal. The men, ages 68 and 87, weren't in any kind of distress, so they were twice told to contact a boat tow. They didn't, and after seven hours on the water, a fire rescue jet ski transported them back to the boat ramp at Bing's Landing. The men declined medical treatment. A Flagler County Sheriff's deputy is honored for his efforts to help crime victims. John Arking has the details. Flagler County Sheriff's Office Deputy First Class Daniel Laverne was awarded the 2021 Distinguished Victim Services Award during a virtual version of the annual Victims' Rights Week ceremony hosted by Attorney General Ashley Moody. The Distinguished Victim Services Award recognizes law enforcement and victims' advocates who've made extraordinary efforts in assisting and protecting crime victims. Flagler County Sheriff Rick Staley. We're very honored that Florida's Attorney General Ashley Moody selected Flagler County Detective Daniel Laverne to receive the Victim Services Award. It's a great compliment to Detective Laverne's dedication to serving victims of crime but also a great honor for the Flagler County Sheriff's Office. Laverne was nominated for his role in a juvenile sexual offense case last year, in which it was said that through his determination and attention to detail, he was able to determine the identity of the victims and ensure that the suspect faced a lengthy prison sentence. Detective Laverne began his career with the Sheriff's Office in November of 2013. In that time, he's won numerous awards, including unit citations and multiple commendation awards. He was previously a member of the office's SWAT team. He's currently assigned to the investigative services division in the major case unit. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm John Arkin. Prescription drug take-back day was a success in Flagler County. Amy Cherry has more. Brittany Kershaw is public affairs manager for the Flagler County Sheriff's Office. The residents of Flagler County took advantage of it and they turned in over 165 pounds of unneeded or expired medication. Drug take-back days keep drugs from ending up in the trash or flushed and polluting the waterways. The twice annual event will happen again in October, but you don't have to wait until then. A lot of times pharmacies and also the Flagler Beach Police Department collect prescriptions year-round. Or for a list of locations that will take your expired or unwanted prescription medications anytime, visit takebackday.dea.gov. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Amy Cherry. Things are very different than they were just over a year ago. When COVID-19 hit, everything came to a grinding Halt. David Bosserdet, the district safety specialist with Flagler County Schools, said that meant schools, too, even though we didn't know how or if coronavirus affected students. We switched everybody to remote learning, and you know, that's something that was new not only to us, but to schools across the country. And then, obviously, as, as COVID continued to grow throughout the country and in the state and even Flagler County, we were preparing for the next school year, and we weren't sure what that was going to look like. Bosserdet said that the governor then approved having in-person learning again in August, and that brought on a lot of uncertainty. He said that with the guidelines the district, in conjunction with the county health department, put into place, the school district is pleased thus far. Flagler Health Matters is on the radio every Saturday morning at 1130 here on WNZF. You can also listen to the podcast on the Flagler radio app. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll.